Recently, Didi Kerman and his aircraft went down near the desert pyramids. He went down far enough away from the communist airbase that a rescue attempt is feasible. This is Echo 3, and let's continue discussing the Cold War. This contract is to explore the pyramids right next to where Didi went down, and this one's to fly higher than 10,000 meters. The first order of business is to construct a craft that can hold at least two Kerbals and fly up to 10,000 meters in altitude. It also needs to be able to take off from the Space Center, fly all the way to the pyramids, and return. Not only does the aircraft need to fly high and far, it also needs to be able to fly slow enough that it can land next to the pyramids. So the wings need to have enough surface area so that the aircraft can have a pretty low stall speed. Some of the parts mods I'm using to help make airplanes include the Mark I stock-alike open cockpit, the Mark IV space plane systems, Airplane Plus, Mark II stock-alike expansion, and Mark III stock-alike expansion. The red and black ball in the middle of the aircraft is from the mod RCS Build Aid, and that is my dry center of mass for the aircraft. Increasing the angle of incidence on the main wing like this will help reduce the drag caused by the fuselage. Small adjustments to the aerodynamic surfaces can have a big effect on the plane's performance. Adding another fuel tank to the front of the aircraft will help keep the center of mass from shifting so much during flight. It looks like Jeb can take this thing out and save Didi. This is a pretty long flight, so Jebediah will be making use of the atmospheric autopilot so that he will not have to be under so much stress during the entire flight. If I were playing an unmodded career mode game, I would not do very many of the surveys around Kerbin, except with an autopilot mod like this, they can make those contracts a lot more feasible because you don't even have to be at the computer the entire time while you fly for an hour or something to a location. In the same way, there's another mod called Bon Voyage that will control rovers for you, and you don't even have to be actively at the controls. It will drive the rover to the location, the waypoint that you set, and it will even do that under time warp, which is really handy. Jibidai is now approaching the pyramids. With these early landing gear, he needs to take it very slowly and gently, otherwise the landing gear will come down too rough on the desert floor and bad things will happen. So he's going to come in very gently watching his vertical speed and touchdown. Excellent landing, Jebediah. Now he's going to take the plane and just drive over to Didi so he can pick him up. This will also give Jebediah a chance to check out these pyramid structures here in the desert. I wonder what ancient civilization of Kerbals constructed these, and for what purpose? Was it an ancient landing site for aliens? Why don't you share your thoughts about the pyramids in the comment section? I'd love to hear them. Didi is now recovered and in the new aircraft. Jeb and Didi are going to drive around to the front of the pyramids and check out an odd structure that they saw up there. It looks like a large Kerbal. Didi is going to get out and take a closer look at this Jeb-like structure. One of the mods I have installed is called Anomaly Surveyor, and it is the one giving me the contract to go check out these desert pyramids, but it will give lots of contracts to check out all the different anomalies throughout the Kerbal system. It is a really fun mod, I really enjoy using it, and it gives more reasons to explore different places on the different planets and moons. Now it's time for Jeb and Didi to fly home. Just like the trip to the pyramids, I will be cutting out a lot of the flight and just giving you a little bit of the highlights of that. For this return flight, I am also using the atmospheric autopilot mod. MechJeb has something very similar that you could use if you are already using that mod. But no mods are used for the landing. This will be all Didi and his exceptional skill. The runway is a lot smoother, so landing here should be a lot easier, although he is coming in pretty fast. He'll just reverse the engine thrust and back up on the runway to recover that. With the pilot safely recovered, it's time to look up other contracts for the program. Since the Central Kerbin Alliance Network wants to set Kerbal boots on the MUN, they should probably spend some more time investigating its surface. These are a series of contracts that will help them study the Munner surface. 
This probe will need to be very similar to the one that was set in orbit around Kerbin, except it needs to make it all the way to Mun orbit, so it'll need to have extra fuel. Other than that, it'll be a very similar probe. The science instruments that are being added to this probe, as well as the contract for this mission, are all from the mod ScanSat. These scientific instruments are going to require a lot of electricity, so that is the purpose for all of these solar panels and the large amount of batteries. On the top left of the screen, you can see the Kerbal Engineer readout. The number I'm focused on right now is the torque readout. I'm wanting to keep that number very low so that the center of mass will be directly over the engine. The torque is low enough that the reaction wheels in the probe core and the amount of gimbal by the carrier engine is enough that this won't be an issue. For this particular rocket, I am having some fun with the mod Textures Unlimited recolor department, just giving a little bit of a different look to the parts on this thing. In the past, some of the craft I have colored using the mod DCK. This time I am using TURD. And we have liftoff of our first MUN orbital survey craft. The solid rocket booster pushed this craft through the lower atmosphere. Now the swivel is pushing it up high enough to get this craft into a suborbital trajectory. Then the interior engine will finish the job of circularization and taking this thing all the way to the MUN. The craft will coast to its apoapsis where it will perform its circularization burn. Once it is in a stable orbit around Kerbin, a maneuver can be set up to take this craft out to the MUN. The scientific instruments on this particular probe will work best if the craft is in a polar orbit, so it's going to be just a little bit different than putting the craft into an equatorial orbit. After making the burn out to the MUN sphere of influence, the craft will need to make a course correction midway there so that it can line up with the MUN's poles and get into about a 100 kilometer circular orbit around the poles of the MUN. The different instruments from ScanSat have different altitudes at which they work best. So if you're going to be using parts from that mod, make sure you read the part description so you know exactly what orbit you should put your crafts in. In this case, 100 kilometers is going to be about right for all three different instruments I have on here. So that's why I'm going with this particular orbit. And now the probe will start scanning. This science contract is to collect science from space around Kerbin. We already have a probe in space around Kerbin, so that'll be very easy. We just need to accept the contract, then go to our probe and transmit some data. There's another contract to send data from the surface of the MUN. I expect that the space program will be sending something there pretty soon, so we'll go ahead and accept that contract as well. Just need to analyze the data that has been collected by one of these instruments, then transmit that back to Kerbin, and that contract will be complete, and the program will have some extra science points to work with. This was a really easy contract to complete, and sometimes those are really nice to have. Do you like playing with any contract packs when you play the game? If so, could you let me know in the comments? It appears that a Kerbal has got himself stuck in orbit while testing some EVA equipment. We need to go up there quickly and rescue this guy. Like the earlier rescue mission, the program needs a craft that can hold at least two Kerbals. This crew compartment is very light compared to the command pod, so I'm adding some fins to the top of the craft to help this thing remain stable as it descends through the atmosphere on re-entry. Normally it takes about 3,400 meters per second of delta V to get into orbit, but this craft will need to make some different maneuvers while it is up there in order to rendezvous with our stranded Kerbal. So need to pay very close attention to our delta V readout. I'm not quite sure it's going to have enough, especially accounting for some of the poor aerodynamics of the top with those weird fins up there craft may need a little bit of a redesign. Again, I'm using the mod turd to color some of the parts. I think it looks nice. Let's go ahead and change the main booster using a swivel and the liquid fuel here. That should give this thing plenty of Delta V to get up there and rescue our stranded Kerbal. Since Jib and I is trying to rescue a Kerbal in low orbit, 
the launch window is when the stranded Kerbal is just a little bit behind the Space Center, so that's why Jebediah waited to launch his rocket here. After the first stage booster has burned through its fuel, the second stage is going to power this craft for the rest of the trip. The first thing Jebediah is doing is getting the craft into orbit, watching the intercept lines here, so he's not going to have a close approach on the initial intercept, but as he comes back around to finish his first orbit, he will have a very close approach with the stranded Kerbal. In Jeb's case here, the orbital insertion burn also was his rendezvous burn. Now as Jebediah nears the other craft, he's going to point his rocket on the target side of the retrograde marker. This will help decrease the relative velocity between the two crafts and get the closest approach close enough that the stranded Kerbal can fly over to Jeb's craft. I guess if he was up here to test the EVA equipment, this is a pretty good test jumping from one craft to the next, trying to line up with the hatch here. By setting the rescue craft as the target, it does make the EVA flight a lot easier. With the stranded Kerbal on board, Jeb is waiting another orbit so that he can set up his deorbit burn to land very close to the Space Center. Because not all of Kerbin is friendly to our Central Kerbin Alliance network, Jebediah needs to make sure he lands in friendly territory. Otherwise, it could create a bit of an international incident trying to rescue him after he has landed. It would also give the communists access to some of our technology. And Jebediah completes another successful rescue mission. I am Echo 3. Thanks for joining me on this discussion about the Cold War. I will see you next time.